This car should have been banned. In fact, it was banned, but managed somehow to get around its ban and carry on racing. It took the V8 IndyCar powered Toyota Prius concept to a new level. It proved very competitive in Japan, and it also shocked the European racing establishment. This is the story of the 2016 APR Toyota Prius GT300. The Japanese APR racing team had shocked the establishment back in 2012 when it designed and built an IndyCar V8 powered Toyota Prius to compete in Super GT. It was a hugely interesting design and one that used components from the road-going Prius hybrid system to go racing. However, as it was a mid-engined design, that car was seemingly banned at the end of the 2015 season, and its creator, Hiroto Kaneso, was highly emotional at the final race, as it seemed he was waving goodbye to his wild creation. Of course, everybody expected Kaneso to create another GT300 Toyota for the 2016 season. The paddock was full of rumours about what it would be. Some seemed certain that it would be a mother chassis car, while others said it would be a new front-engined JAF GT300 rules car. Others again suggested that it might even be a hydrogen fuel cell Toyota Mirai GT300. Kaneso eventually admitted to the media that it was true that he was developing a new car, and he would show it off at the 2016 Auto Salon in January of that year. When the covers came off the new machine though, everybody was shocked. It was another Prius, though this time based on the brand new XW50 variant of the Prius road car. But what was really shocking was that the car remained mid-engined. Don't forget, mid-engined cars had already been banned. Super GT has two classes, GT300 and GT500. GT500 is mainly for manufacturer-backed teams using highly developed composite chassis cars with engines which theoretically produce 500 brake horsepower, hence the class name, GT500 for 500 horsepower cars, and GT300 is for 300 brake horsepower cars, though in reality the cars in both classes make a lot more power than the class names suggest. In GT300 there were three entirely separate rulebooks covering cars that competed in that category. One for FIA GT3 rules cars, not much more to say there, one for the mother chassis cars, which we'll have to come back to, and finally the Japan Auto Federation or JAF GT300 rules. The Prius was built to the last of these. Some people claim that these are tube frame silhouettes, but that's not really the full story. The JAF GT300 rules state that a car must utilise a small amount of the production car in its construction, and in the case of the Prius, that amounted to less than 5% of the base model. The parts included in the race car Prius were the A-pillar, about a third of the roof, the front bulkhead, though the team had drilled a lot of holes in that, the headlight lenses, but not the internals of the headlights, and the tail light lenses lenses, and of course the badges on the car as well. The JAF rules also allowed the cars to be fitted with any engine from the chassis manufacturer's range to be used. Any engine. So APR opted to continue with the IndyCar based 3.4 litre normally aspirated V8 it used in the first generation GT300 Prius. However, the location of the engine was controversial. In 2012, when the first Prius was built, along with its bitter rival the Honda CRZ GT300, the engine could be located anywhere in the car. However, in 2015 it was announced that for the following season this would no longer be allowed, and that JAF GT300 cars, indeed all cars in Super GT, would have to have have the engine mounted in the same location as the production car, something Subaru had done for a long time with its BRZ GT300 car, which was built to the exact same rulebook as the Prius. However, the new APR Prius GT300 had a mid-engined layout, when the road car was front-engined. Everybody wondered how on earth this was possible within the new regulation, but Caneso had been a bit clever. As the production version of the XW50 Prius had gone on sale about 48 hours before the new regulation came into force, Caneso registered his new GT300 literally hours before the new rule would be applied. He'd realised that the ban would not apply to existing designs, so even though his new car hadn't actually raced, it was classified as an existing design. I still wonder if GTA and its chairman Masaki Bando had actually allowed APR to get away with this a little bit as a result of the hugely positive international reaction to the first generation APR 
GDPR Prius, and he didn't really want to miss out on all of that publicity. Either way, the Prius was allowed to race, even though it was mid-engined, and APR had been very hard at work. Everyone was surprised when it revealed not one, but two Prius entries for the 2016 season. The two cars were far from identical as well. Underneath the bodywork, the new XW50 based Prius GT300 was actually very similar to that original 2012 car. Indeed, the chassis on the number 30 Prius literally was the chassis of the 2012 car. The number 31 car, however, had a new chassis with a few small improvements. It had been suggested that one of the old Axio Corolla chassis could have been used to build the new Prius, but that wasn't actually the case in the end. It could have been done, however. In fact, the Prius chassis concept was a gentle evolution of a design that Caneso had first used all the way back on his Toyota MRS GT300, and you can see some of the details of this in this gorgeous drawing by Jufuku. One of the differences between the Axio Corolla chassis and the first Prius chassis was that the Prius used thinner walled tubing to save weight, but it was later found that this reduced the torsional stiffness of the car. As this chassis was the one used on the number 30 second generation Prius, that car also suffered from this trade-off. However, the new specification number 31 Prius had revised the tubing in the engine bay to increase the stiffness once more. The number 31 was able to accept the additional weight of the thicker tubing as its hybrid system System was lighter than that used on the 2012 Prius. Like the 2012 car, the 31 Prius used modified standard production parts in its hybrid system. However, unlike the first Prius, those parts didn't all come from a Prius. The MGU on the number 31 car was taken from a Toyota Camry hybrid, and this represented a notable difference from the number 30 car, where the original Prius-based system had been replaced with an MGU from the Toyota Aqua instead. The way the hybrid system worked on each car was also different with the number 31 having a more aggressive deployment than the number 30 car, which deployed its energy more steadily. In fact, a fairly constant deployment whenever the driver was on the throttle in the case of the number 30. At first, APR and indeed Toyota were very reluctant to reveal the battery technology used on each car, only stating that the batteries on both of them differed from one another, but used production-based cells. Though it was hinted that on one of the cars, the number 31, the cells came from a forthcoming model rather than its current model. The PCUs were also modified standard production parts, as was the case with the 2012 car, and apparently getting them to work with the Cosworth Motorsport electronics system fitted to the car was a major challenge, but one APR managed to get sorted. It later emerged that, at least initially, the number 30 car used a lithium-ion battery chemistry, while the number 31 used a supercapacitor-based system. GTA, the organisers of the Super GT Championship, placed a weight penalty on hybrids in GT300, and that penalty plus the system system itself added 80 kilograms to the overall car weight, which with that included totaled 1100 kilograms. The braking system on the car was acquired, shall we put it, from TRD's Lexus SC430 GT500 cars, which by then had been replaced by the LC500. There had been suspension changes on the second generation Prius, and while the suspension remained a double wishbone layout with pushrod actuated springs and damper units with third elements, front and rear, the geometry had been changed notably compared to the 2012 car. This is most obvious looking at the third elements themselves. At the front it was mounted transversely on the original car, but on the new car it was mounted longitudinally. Then take a look at the spring and damper units themselves, which had been mounted vertically on the original machine. On the new machine they were installed horizontally. Indeed the geometry actually differed between the 30 and 31 cars in the 2016 season. This was because the 30 car used off-the-shelf Yokohama tyres, while the number 31 used Bridgestone tyres which had been specifically developed for it. Don't forget, this was a full-blown tyre war formula at the time. The Bridgestones on the 31 car allowed for a stiffer setup than the Yokohamas, which needed a softer approach, and that explains the difference between the 30 and 31 suspension system. The car's aerodynamics differed obviously from the 2012 model because it was based on a different base model, but the overall concept was retained with the flared arches front and rear and a large wide rear diffuser mounted at the very back of the car, obviously. Interestingly, the rear wing on the car not only carried over from the 2012 car, but the actual wing shape itself dated all the way back to the MRS GT300. But there had been some changes in the way it was mounted. You'll notice the 2016 car had swan neck mountings, whereas the original 2012 car did not. As was the case with the 2012 model, the aerodynamic design largely came out of the mind of Hiroto Kaneso. But unlike the 2012 car, the new model had been subjected to some 
drop it aerodynamic development. A notable amount of CFD work was done, for example, as well as a bit of small scale, I think about 40% wind tunnel model testing. That was followed up with some full scale wind tunnel testing, courtesy of Toyota. As I mentioned, the new Prius also used the Toyota RV8K IndyCar derived engine. This 3.4 litre normally aspirated design was becoming a bit of an issue because parts for it were beginning to become a little bit scarce. Indeed, some of the parts of the engines used by APR had to be specially made. This picture of the tailpipe has no real relevance to the narrative at this point, but just look at it, it's hypnotically gorgeous. Anyway, parts shortages were also an issue with the transmission, as the Prius used the well-proven Hewland NLT, which on the Prius used slightly thicker ratios than the standard due to its use in endurance races. The new Prius was a strong runner from the outset, with the number 31 car winning the third race of the 2016 season, although that race was short and unexpectedly, and it finished the championship in second position behind a mother chassis GT86. At the end of the 2016 season, APR shipped one Prius to Malaysia to contest the Sepang 12 hours, a round of the Intercontinental GT Challenge. The European teams in Ferraris, Porsches, Audis and Lamborghinis got quite a shock when they found themselves being overtaken by a Toyota Prius with an IndyCar engine. It qualified 11th for the race, but it was forced to use different tyres to normal and different tyres to what it was built to run on, and it also had a rather negative balance of performance for that race, and it was felt that the car didn't really get to show what it could do, other than scare the Europeans a bit. Reliability issues meant that it dropped out of contention, though this car was never really designed to compete in a 12 hour race anyway. The 2017 season wasn't great for Eva Prius, the number 30 failed to score any points, and for the first time since a Prius first appeared in Super GT, the number 31 didn't win a single race, and it ended the year down in 16th in the championship. 2018 had to be different, and Caneso started to rework both cars, fitting the more advanced super capacitor hybrid system to the number 30, while also making some improvements to the number 31. While the number 31 did have a vague chance of winning the championship going into the final round, it had failed to win a race all year, but it had scored four podiums, and that was enough to see it finish the year in third overall. A driveline failure in the opening race of the year, though, likely cost it the title. The number 30 car, well, that was again pointless. At the end of the year, GTA finally closed the loophole which had allowed APR to compete with a mid-engined car, which didn't really fit the regulations. For 2019, it was made strictly clear that all cars would have to race with the engines fitted to the cars in the same location as it was fitted in the road car, regardless of when the car was actually built. That alone saw the end of the Prius in Super GT, but APR had also run out of parts to keep the Toyota RV8K IndyCar based engine operational. The story of the wild V8 Prius had finally come to an end. Or had it? If you've enjoyed this mild hybrid tale of rules avoidance and scaring Ferrari drivers, then there's a lot more like this to come. So stay tuned and see you soon somewhere in the pit lane. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>